Okay, we've looked at how to graph a parabola if you're given the equation in standard form, and we've also looked at how to graph an equation if you're given an equation in vertex form. So we've gone from equation to graphing. Now let's go the other way around. If I'm given the graph, how do I find the equation? Well, if we were to try and find the equation in standard form, we'd have to be able to get information from the graph that would help us find values for a, b, and c. Right, because y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. We'd have to get information from the graph that tells us a, b, and c. That's not as easy as being able to find information from the graph that tells us a, p, and q. So let's do the, the thin looking parabola, the thin lined one, so the one that's opening downwards. So if I have to have an equation not necessarily have to, but let's find the equation of this parabola in vertex form because it's easy to pick off what the vertex is. And in this case, I know that P and Q come from the vertex, and the vertex in this case is 1 and 4. Therefore, P is equal to 1, Q is equal to 4. So now I've got, uh, like, I'm, I'm two-thirds of the way there. I have P, I have Q. Now I just need to find A. And the fastest way that for me personally in doing that, the fastest way for me to figure that out, is to pick off any other nice, easy coordinate from my graph, right? A nice One that's got nice integer values, like this one here. Doesn't, it's not easy to pick off what their, what their coordinates are. So in terms of finding easy ones, well, I've got one here. I've got another one here. Sorry, I have one here. I have another one here. And I've got another one here. So I have three whole points that are nice and easy to choose from. So I'm going to choose this one, which happens to be the y-intercept. So also, I've also got point on the graph. 0, 3. Okay? And now I've got four things that can, I can substitute into an equation that has five things. So I can substitute the point 0, 3 in for x and y. And then I can also sub in 1 and 4 for p and q. And that's going to leave me with the variable a, the only thing left to find. So let's try that. Substitute everything. 3 is equal to a times. 0 minus 1 squared plus 4. So there's my x and my y from my, my point p. So let's label that p, 0, 3. I've got my x and y point. I've got my p and q values from my vertex, which I found here. So my vertex is 1, 4. And now all I have to do is solve for a. So 3 is equal to a times 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 plus 4. Rearrange. And so isolate for a. And I get well, 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. Now, just to make sure that it, my answer for a kind of makes sense, I've got a negative value and I have an opening down parabola. So right off the bat, I don't have to worry too much about whether or not that negative should be there. It should be. Now, just to verify the step, or the, a value, the, the size of the A value, if I were to go over 1, I should go down 1, right? Over 1, down 1, that follows the step property of 1. So if I go over 1 and down 1, then my A value should be negative 1. So that's a second way to check. So I've got my parabola y is equal to negative times, negative 1 if you want, uh, x minus 1 squared plus 4. Done. Okay. Not very much math in terms of work that you have to do. Good. Now let's try the second one, the, the parabola opening up that, uh, that is a little bit thicker in, in line. Let's see what I can do here. My vertex Maybe I'll take this information off of here, just for the moment. My vertex uh, is down here. And based on my graph, uh, just because 
I'm, I'm not necessarily going to give an equation that's you know 0.45 for for a vertex. I'll give semi nice numbers. That's pretty safe to say that that is negative one half. So my vertex is negative one half, and my y value is sorry, my x value is zero. And my y value is negative one half. There we go. That's my vertex of zero, negative one half. In this case, notice how my y intercept is my vertex as well. So uh, if I were to try and pick off another point like I did here, I can't really pick off the y intercept because the vertex and the y intercept are the same point. So I need different ones. Now, the easiest one for me to find is that one. So my other point, my p is 1, 0. So I have two points, 1, 0, and 0, negative 1 half. 1, 2, 3, 4 things, 1, 2, 3, 4, and let's solve for the fifth. So 0 is equal to a times x minus 0 squared minus 1 half. Except it's not x minus 0. It should be x minus, no, nope, x minus 0. Not x minus 0. 1 minus 0. 1 minus 0 squared minus 1 half. So 0 is equal to a times 1 minus 0 is 1. 1 squared is 1 minus a half. So my a value is positive 1 half. And there I go. So my equation is now just to double check that my value is reasonable. It's positive, so it should be opening up. And if I were to go from my step property, if I were to go over one value, I go up. I'm only going up a half unit here, so my a value is a half. Perfect. So my equation is y equals one half x minus p, and I decided that my p-value is 0, squared minus 1 half, or more simplified, 1 half x squared minus a half, and I'm done. So that's how we graph, uh, or get an equation if we're given a graph. Pick off a vertex, pick off another point, substitute all, those, all four of those values in for x, y, p, and q, solve for a, done.